Most Eurorack gear comes in the HP size, which is the horizontal pitch, this way. Uh, most of it is in even numbers. It's 4 or 6 or 8 or 10 or so on and so forth. Normally even numbers. Now, the problem on the rack brute is the power supply is 5 HP, and that makes it odd. So no matter how I'm jiggling this stuff backwards and forwards, trying to find a sort of a happy way of building it, I keep getting left with one pitch or, or three or something, an odd number that I can't fill in. And I don't really like the gaps in between the units. Uh, this is two HP, for instance. That leaves a three. Uh, you put a four in there and that's going to leave a one. And it's no good just shifting this up because you end up with the one at this end. And it's, to me, it's like kind of irritating. So what I want to do is build a 5 HP to sit in there and fill that in. Now, I don't just want a blank panel like this. I want to make it useful. I want to do something with it. And uh, the other problem, of course, is the actual power connector that goes on onto the, uh, the rail on here. That sits quite high and it only gives me about 20 millimeters or something. So I can't build anything on there with much more depth than this, or else it's going to be pushing against that as well. So what I've come up with, hopefully, is as I've got the uh, spring reverb, which I made in a previous video, and another nice item has arrived, which is the Disting Mark IV by Expert Sleepers. This is a great little kind of uh, Swiss Army knife type of module. Now, I want to add that as well. So if I just sort of pop that in there and pop that in there, then things are going to start lining up and everything's going to look great. But what do I put in there that's actually going to be useful and not too deep? Well, this uh, spring reverb, you can uh, buy an extra piece that has the phono connectors on the front. So you can put on there your sort of big spring reverbs and things and attach directly to spring reverbs. So that's handy, but I don't want to buy the module because the module's already a set size in HP. However, the uh, disting unit here has a pin header on the top and that goes directly to uh, MIDI, 5 pin MIDI. So I thought if I put that in there and that on there and I put a couple of the MIDI sort of uh, 5 pin DINs on there and the phono connectors for this as well with a control so I can sit between the brick and the, phone and the uh, proper spring reverb, build that all into a module, it shouldn't be too deep and that should not be in the way there. So I'm going to go ahead and try and build that module for that piece there. So here's a little explanation on Eurorack sizings. All your modules should be 128.5 high and bear in mind that your screw hole, or if you just have one of them at least, should be 7.5 millimeters in by three millimeters from the edge, same as at the top there. Now then, as I've already got a 5 HP module in this, that's the uh, power supply for the rack brute, that's gonna leave me an odd number when I move along. And most of the Eurorack modules that I've seen are all even numbers, not odd numbers. So it's, yeah, it's gonna leave me a little gap and that will be difficult to fill in unless I make another 5 HP module and put it beside the power supply. That way that makes 10. And then that brings everything back into even numbers and all the modules should fall into place and shouldn't look so wrong with gaps and things in there. So working out a 5 HP module, it's easy if you do it in inches because it's 0.2 inch per HP, per horizontal pitch. But in the real world, what happens is if you say, if you want a 10 HP module, that would add up to 50.8 millimeters in the real world. But the actual widths of these modules are a little bit smaller. So a 50.5 is normally what a manufacturer would make. So therefore, 5 HP is one inch, which makes 25.4. But I want to go on the actual widths. 20, 30, what I want in the middle here is 25. So let me just check that. Here's the actual plate off the power supply. So this should be 25 millimeters. 25.03, yeah, 
that's close enough, 25 millimeters. So I'll make one of these, put it, uh, that one next to this one, that'll make 10, everything will be even numbers, and I shouldn't have any gaps, hopefully. But these, in the black, is the sizings that you should really use if you're making any modules for your rack, because they're the sort of actual widths of actual units that you buy. Fortunately, I've already got the template here, for the size at least. So this material here is actually black anodized aluminium, and uh, it has a cover on it so that you can mark out things on it. And then when you're happy, you just peel it off and it's nice and black and shiny and easy to work with. So if I just do this a moment, just get that size marked up like so. And while I'm at it, I can cheat as well. Don't have to work out where the uh, screw holes are going to be because with an automatic center punch, I'll just punch where those holes need to be. There's MIDI in, a couple of MIDI sockets, and that'd be great for the uh, disting. That's just uh, an idea, a sort of a guess for the size of the potentiometer that I'm going to put in there. And then I'm going to need a couple of phonos. So if I put a couple of phonos in there as well, then this module that I cut out uh, should at least be useful for something. Although when I've got plugs in these, that button might be a bit too short to get between. So maybe if I put the potentiometer up at the top, and then bring these two down here, at least there'll be nothing in the way for me to kind of use that. And then you can just flip it around and use it either way. But I think that's the best sort of layout anyway. Now, just peel off this backing strip and we should be left with a nice black surface. The spring reverb uh, needs a 50k potentiometer and that connects to this piece here. You pull that off and what happens is as you turn the 50k potentiometer it sort of provides a bit more of the digital brick, so I get that in frame, a bit more of the digital brick or a bit more of the external spring. So that is going to connect to that and these phonos connect to this socket here. And then with the MIDI that just goes onto this four pin header on the uh, disting. Let me laser this up, see if I can make it look neat. So there you go, panel all made up. And uh, yeah, I've sort of laser etched both sides so that I can either have the MIDI at the bottom or the MIDI at the top. So I can flip it over and use it either way. But I think I'm gonna do it this way around anyway. So I'll just assemble it and then I'll get onto wiring all these cables up and things for it. So if you want to make something like this or you know just have a, an output for the spring reverb or uh, the MIDI for the disting here and you want to make your own little device I'll show you how to uh, wire it up. It's quite simple really. Uh, so on the music thing modular I do believe the brick is at the top and the spring is at the bottom so I'm going to be looking at this from the back and my brick is to the left. So that is going to be this connection. So that has got to go to there for the brick. And then the center piece, I'll jump that. It's not very professional, this is it? And then this will be for the spring reverb. So that's kind of your connection for the pot to the music thing modular spring reverb. Now, when you come to these connections down here, number one, is the send so there's your send and then this is the ground for the send so or well not the ground you know uh, and then the next one I believe that is for the return in the center and then that goes into there like that so that's the music thing modular thing set up now on the disting uh, for your MIDI, 
Now, the MIDI input, oh, hang on a minute, which way have I got this? Oh, I've got the in at the bottom and the out above it, or the in at the top. Oh. I kind of put those the wrong way round. I really wanted in at the top and out at the bottom, but it doesn't doesn't really matter. I'll just have to be careful how I've wired this up. Right, okay. So pin one is going to go to the out, which is there. So this pin one is going to have to go to that one, that pin there. Uh, and then uh, let me see, I don't want to mess this up. I'm trying to work this in reverse to the MIDI plug. I'm trying to flip it around in my brain as I'm sort of uh, writing it out. So then this third one should go there. And the fourth one should go there. Excellent. And while I'm at it, I can jump off one of these grounds to the centre pin of the MIDIs there as well. And then everything sort of nicely all grounded up. Right, all soldered up and ready for assembly. So there you go. That has uh, sorted out the problem of turning the odd numbers into even numbers by putting another five module in there. Two fives make ten, all that lot. Yeah, whatever. But uh, at least it's useful now and it's pretty easy to make. It's not complicated. It's just uh, an extension to what's already on the back of the music thing modular and the disc thing. So yeah, I've added the MIDI to it and I've added the uh, extension send and return out to go to spring reverbs and things like that. So let me just test this. So that goes over to the brick. That comes back to the spring. So yeah, that's, uh, that's handy now. So I can sort of play about and add little bits and pieces on the end of that and uh, see how it goes. Now what I've done on the disc thing as well, I've just set it to the uh, MIDI to CV thing. Although this, this does so much, this disc thing does, it's, uh, it's a real Swiss army knife. And they keep on adding little bits to it every now and again. It's kind of got everything, well, not everything, but lots of useful things in there. I'm actually uh, considering getting two, three or four or something, because it does a heck of a lot. Now then, uh, other than that, Yes, I've got a blank plate here. I don't like a blank plate. I, I, I want to build something onto that. And then I've got these two gaps here. Whether I buy a ready-made module or try and build something up, that's useful. I'm not too sure. But there's so many good things available. You know, I'm just going to buy something and throw it in there. Anyhow, uh, what you'll hear now is just the uh, unit at the top. And uh, then I shall bring this in. Thank you very much for watching. All the best. Bye-bye.